Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Ooh, taking a live look out at the Alamo City. Six o'clock this morning, 79 degrees to start your weekend. What does the rest of the weekend look like? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. Until then, good morning. It is Saturday, September 4th. Thank you so much for starting your weekend with us. Our weekend, Thursday, Friday. Yeah. How'd you spend it? Um, You know, indoors again. Just... Hibernating? Yeah, hibernating. <laughs> I did make it out to a Friday Night Lights game last night. Nice. And the weather was, eh, you know, it was a little humid, a little mosquito-y. <laughs> Uh, but Sarah, <laughs> a little mosquitoy. A little mosquito. -y. I like that. Yeah, you know the time where you put off on and you still get bit by mosquitoes. Oh yeah, mm. so that's annoying. It was like that a, time of year for. Thought us. I got them, but they got me. Absolutely. <laughs> well, you know, I actually got to escape to Iowa. Whoa. Over the last couple of days, and the weather there was beautiful. I was visiting my grandfather. Seventies in the afternoon. Oh, beautiful. Fifties in the morning. It's great. We're at. We're Welcome near home. 80, thank you. We're near 80 degrees this morning. Nice. In San Antonio, it's 79 at the airport, 79 at JBSA Randolph, 80 in Canyon Lake, already 80 degrees up in Canyon Lake. Carville, you're clocking in at 76, 76 in Tarpley, and 78 in Hondo. A wider view here, waking up this morning at 82 degrees in Del Rio. It's 74 in Gonzales and 76 in Kennedy. So it is a big travel weekend, of course, Labor Day weekend. Uh, I wanted to give you a Texas travel cast. So today, if you're traveling across the state of Texas, the only place you'll need to worry about rain is up near the Lubbock area and also in the Panhandle. Meanwhile, down near Laredo, it's going to be 100 degrees. Up in Dallas, 95 for the high temperature. Then by tomorrow, we are going to see some rain across central parts of Texas, from San Angelo to Waco. Even here in San Antonio, there is a chance for some showers tomorrow in the afternoon. And then by Labor Day itself, uh, that's our best chance for rain in San Antonio. We'll be looking at temperatures well into the 90s, though, before we get a chance for some rainfall. So today, also a great day to maybe head out to the Guadalupe or the Comal to soak up some uh, what's left of summer. We're going to be seeing temperatures climb into the upper 90s, 99 for the forecast high today, mostly sunny. Although I will mention that the uh, UV index is going to be extreme. Skin damage could occur in 20 minutes or less. So just use some caution out there today. It's going to be a hot one. I'll be back to talk about those rain chances for the rest of our Labor Day weekend and show you what you can expect over the next seven days. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Well, new this morning, Bear County investigators are working to figure out who was responsible for a drive-by shooting that ended with a pregnant teenager shot and now in the hospital. Here's what we know right now. Just before midnight, Bear County Sheriff's Office was called to the 11,200 block of Dublin Woods. That's on the far west side. We are told family members and neighbors heard shots coming from the street. Several bullets hit the home, and one of those bullets hit the 17-year-old pregnant woman who was inside the house. She was taken to University Hospital. She is in serious condition, but she's also stable. BCSO says they are still working to figure out what exactly happened and who pulled the trigger. Top story this morning. A new ruling is now helping shield multiple health clinics from dozens of whistleblower lawsuits. The Associated Press reporting a state district judge in Austin issued the temporary restraining order after a request from Planned Parenthood. This is what we know right now. This heartbeat law is one of the most restrictive across the country. As of September 1st, the Texas law limits abortions within the first six weeks of pregnancy. The law does not offer any exemptions, even for victims of rape. The law also allowed citizens to file lawsuits against those who helped or conducted the abortion procedures. The latest ruling actually bars lawsuits from the nonprofit group Texas Right to Life, its legislative director, and 100 unidentified individuals. But still not clear if anyone else could file a lawsuit. Meanwhile, RICES, a nonprofit centered around migrant families, says they are now working around the law by offering women a way to get an abortion outside of the state of Texas. Now, the Texas Right to Life group reacted to this ruling, saying they, quote, expect an impartial court will dismiss Planned Parenthood's lawsuit, end quote. So many more developments we expect throughout the weekend and throughout the coming weeks. You can read all about the developing stories right now. Just head to KSAT.com. Well, the pandemic leading to five more deaths here in Bear County. That's now includes Bear County Deputy Ronald Butler, the 56-year-old battling COVID-19 since late July and was in the hospital. He was pronounced dead yesterday afternoon. 1,218 COVID-19 patients are hospitalized. There is a decrease in our seven-day average, but we continue to see 1,100 COVID-19 cases each day 
Health officials are reminding everyone to be safe this Labor Day weekend. And speaking of the holiday weekend, federal health officials have a recommendation for the unvaccinated across the state over this long weekend. Stay home. They are also urging the White House to scale back plans to roll out booster shots on September 20th. That's because regulators need more time to review and collect data. That's right. ABC's Christine Sloan has more. On this Labor Day weekend, an estimated 38 million people are expected to travel. What brings you to the Bay Area today? A wedding. Relatives that we haven't seen for a while. But health officials have a warning for people who have not received their COVID vaccine yet. First and foremost, if you are unvaccinated, um, we would recommend not traveling. Right now, more than 47 percent of the entire population is not fully vaccinated. At the same time, more than a thousand Americans are now dying from COVID-19 each day, the worst we've seen in nearly six months. We need to make more progress in fighting the Delta variant of COVID-19. This is a continuing pandemic of the unvaccinated. According to a recent CDC report, unvaccinated people are five times more likely to get COVID and 29 times more likely to be hospitalized. Meanwhile, questions over President Biden's plan to provide COVID-19 booster shots to Americans. Late last month, President Biden said this. Plan is for every, every adult to get a booster shot. We'll be ready to start these booster, this booster program during the week of September 20. But both the CDC and the FDA are saying they need more time to study the data from the makers of the vaccine. One of those makers, Moderna, just finished turning their data in on Friday. Right now, the FDA is only recommending boosters for the immunocompromised. Christine Sloan, ABC News, New York. And monoclonal antibody therapy, one of a handful of treatments with emergency use authorization by the FDA. Currently, it's only available to high-risk patients with a doctor's referral. Basically, the antibodies are laboratory-made proteins that mimic the immune system's ability to fight off harmful antigens such as viruses. The infusion is recommended for people with mild to moderate COVID symptoms, and it's used to prevent hospitalization. But once symptoms are severe and someone requires hospitalizations with oxygen or a ventilator, well, the antibodies won't work. Bear County actually opened the regional infusion center at Freeman Coliseum and university health officials say an average of 60 patients are using these infusions every day. So here's the thing. The Southwest Texas Regional Advisory Council say there are a number of conditions which actually qualify a person to receive the treatment. If you're 65 or older, if you have a BMI or 35 or higher, if you're pregnant, chronic, chronic kidney disease, or if you're diabetic. So if you're interested or have any questions about this antibody treatment, we have all those answers right now. Just head to KSAT.com. Well, we've told you about the major power problems in Louisiana after Hurricane Ida ripped through the state. NASA releasing this satellite image to show the power grid before the storm in the greater New Orleans area. The image of the bright lights taken on August 9th. And 20 days later, Hurricane Ida hit. Take a look at what was left behind. This image also from NASA shows the impact of the blackouts. Much of the power in New Orleans expected to be restored by Wednesday, but it could take longer for other areas. And then, of course, up to the northeast, we know a lot of people we know the death toll is rising and some of the images, I mean, uh, even my parents hometown hit very hard. They were sending me some pictures just from like blocks away. I know uh, my high school district building roof ripped off. Wow. Yeah, really crazy images. Time now, 6.09, 79 degrees out. Well, the Labor Day weekend is here, and there are tons of things for you and your family that they can all do after the break. We'll tell you about a few of them. And for the break, quick live look out of the Alamo City. 79 degrees now. Sorry, Sarah Spivey, this is not Iowa weather. What will it look like for the rest of the weekend? We're going to check in with her in just a few moments. Good morning, welcome back. And for so many of you out there, happy holiday weekend. Labor Day weekend is here and there are so many events for you and your family. So first up, the Labor Day Artisan Show at the San Antonio River Rock 
It will feature vendors with pottery, jewelry, and paintings. The free event is happening now through Monday near the Chamber of Commerce and the shops at the River Center. Also free on the River Walk, the Ford Parade of Lanterns. You'll be able to see 10 boats filled with illuminated lanterns. That's today and tomorrow starting at 8. All right, so if you want to head out of town, you can check out the fair in Kendall County. You'll be able to see a livestock show, rodeo, food, and crafts. The fair runs today and tomorrow on River Road in Bernie in Johnson City. Your city can check out the exotic resort zoo. It offers a drive through option. Ooh, I like the drive through option. Yes, watch out for the zebras. <laughs> Is there a story here? Did you get assaulted I, by zebras? When I was a child. No, they just get they get excited about food. Who doesn't right. get excited when they're giving them free food through a window? You that's, know? that's true. The ostriches, too. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, all right, let's go ahead and talk about the weather you can expect this Labor Day weekend. All in all, it's going to be a hot weekend. Uh, outside right now, we have seen some clouds work back what, their way back in this morning. It is overcast in 79. Of course, that's taken at the airport. South winds at about 10 miles per hour. And it's humid this morning, very humid this morning. But there is a little bit of hope from relief from the humidity, especially this afternoon. We'll talk about that in just a bit. But for now, take a look at these morning temperatures. 82 in Del Rio, 74 in Yavali, 77 in Carrizo Springs. In San Antonio, 79 degrees, 76 in New Braunfels, 76 in Kerrville, 76 up in Fredericksburg, and 76 in Kennedy. All right, a look at the future cast. You can see those morning clouds out there, but watch what happens. They go away very quickly. We're going to have a mostly sunny day today, and it's going to warm up really quickly. In fact, our forecast high around San Antonio, 99 degrees. We have yet to technically hit 100 degrees at the San Antonio International Airport. If we were going to hit 100, it would either be today or tomorrow. So let's see if we can be, beat that technicality and get 100 degrees today, but it'd be nice to keep that at bay. 101 for the high in Del Rio, 103 in Catula, 97 in Gonzales, and 98 for the high temperature in New Braunfels. Up in the hill country should be in the mid-90s. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the humidity is actually going to be a little bit lower this afternoon. We're going to be looking at dew points generally in the 50s and in the low 60s this afternoon. Now, while that is still fairly muggy, it is not going to be oppressively humid outside in the the afternoon. So if you can find some shade this afternoon, it should feel okay outside. But again, just pretty hot as well. So 84 at 10, 91 at noon, 99 for that forecast high. Sun will set at 752 tonight and we'll see south southeast winds at 5 to 15 miles per hour. It's going to be a mild evening at 9. We'll be at about 86 degrees. All right, on the radar and satellite, you can see very clearly that there is a cluster of thunderstorms across parts of Kansas right now. Now, this area of thunderstorms and showers is associated with the cool front uh, that this is the time of year in September when we start to see cool fronts develop across the central plains. Now, it is too hot here in south central Texas for us to see any effects, direct effects from this cool front. However, what it is going to do is tomorrow in the afternoon, it'll spark off some showers and storms across central Texas and outflow boundaries from those showers and storms may develop a few isolated showers and storms from Austin to Fredericksburg to Kerrville and even out toward New Braunfels. So generally north of Highway 90, there will be a 20% chance for an isolated shower or storm tomorrow. Uh, not widespread at all by any means, but if you're lucky to get one of those showers, it'll be a nice cool down from the heat that we're going to experience tomorrow. And then as that front stalls to our north, Monday, Labor Day itself, we have a chance for isolated to widely scattered showers and storms as well. Most of Monday, most of Labor Day will be quiet, but between the hours of 3 p.m. and 7 p.m., that's when we have a 30% chance for an isolated shower or storm. Brief heavy downpours and flashes of lightning are possible, but we're not concerned about severe weather. And then with the loss of daytime heating on Monday, those rain chances will go down. So again, just for this weekend, today is going to be hot and mostly sunny, no chance for rain. Tomorrow, Sunday, there is a small chance isolated in the afternoon north of Highway 90, and then a slightly better chance on Monday. We'll have a little bit more cloud cover on Monday too, but it's still gonna be a hot day. Our high temperature should be right in the mid to upper 90s on Monday for Labor Day itself. And again, a slightly better chance for rain, 30% for isolated afternoon 
thunder showers. All right, here's a look at the seven day forecast. We'll be looking at temperatures hot and humid over the week ahead. We'll be warming up back into the upper 90s by Thursday and Friday. As far as the tropics go, there is Hurricane Larry out in the open Atlantic. I'm going to have more information on Hurricane Larry and potential development in the Gulf coming up in the next half hour of GMSA. Max and Sarah. You want to know how I know it's going to rain here at the station? How? Because I just got a car wash. Oh. Yeah. Oh I was like, maybe gosh. your knees hurt or something. <laughs> <It> just, <laughs> confirmation bias. That's 100% it. <laughs> Time now, 617, 79 degrees out. Max, Friday Night Lights. Oh, yeah. We got some great football to talk about. They are back brighter than ever. We're going to have your full game recaps next. Let's take a look at these lot of numbers. Pick three, eight, three, two, fireball three, daily four, one, eight, four, seven, fireball nine. And your cash five, four, five, six. Look at that. 1631, here we go. Checking the numbers. You have the numbers out. I do have the numbers out because I want to see if anyone won and no one did. Oh, well, just in case you're interested, 7, 10, 12, 61, 65, big number three, Mega Pyre 2. Good luck. We'll be right back. Good morning. Welcome back and happy Football Friday football. There we go. We're going to use that twice. Big game in our big game coverage last night. Third ranked Steel Knights hosting fourth ranked Ragan Rattlers. Rematch from last season. Remember the Rattlers won 21-20. They're up 6-0 pair of field goals. Knights on the 15-yard line. Connor Vincent dropped back. He scrambled in. And here he is again standing tall in the pocket. Number six delivers. Number four over the middle. And he just walks in untouched. Scampered in there. Steel starting to pull away, obviously. Let's take a look at the final. 14-6. I think it builds a little bit more of our confidence. Obviously, there's things we got to fix, but as long as we go in there playing as a team, I think everyone could be big. Uh, it was really important because we lasted them last year, and we needed to come back with a bang, and we did that. All right, and after knocking off DeSoto last week at home, the Judson Rockets, they are back, and they decided to give themselves a little road test against the seventh-ranked team in the state. Ooh, Lake Travis in Austin. Judson down 7-0 in the first, and the Rockets boosters start to fire. Michael Burrows, Marvin Beasley out of the backfield. He gets to the right sideline, turns it up the field. Room to run, 64-yard swing pass, 7-all. But the Rockets would play from behind after that. Let's see where it would go. Ooh, quick man. Ooh, Lake Travis ran away with it, 52. Judson, 20. All right, here we go, though. Smithson Valley kickoff home opener delayed 45 minutes because of lightning, but when they did start, didn't take long for the Rangers to score against Madison. Derek Mata dropping back, taking his time, firing it downfield. Wait for it. Boom. Zach McDonald. Look, make it look easy. Great catch on the goal line. 34-yard touchdown. 7-0 Rangers. And, of course, we're going to have a final 28-0 Smithson Valley. All right, Roosevelt, Rough Riders, Rough Rotos on the road, East Central, and they came out firing against the Hornets. Tyron Miller standing tall, firing deep to Darius Coleman. Wow, he great catch right over the defender, 24-yard game. Roosevelt in the red zone now, Miller feeling it. Goes to Devon, Tennis, and Shepard, front corner, phenomenal catch, 18-yard touchdown, 7-0, Rough Riders, and of course, we have the final. Boom, Roosevelt 20, East Central 32, Madison 0, Smithson Valley 28 for that shutout. Steel over Reagan 14 to 6, and Lake Travis over Judson 52 to 20. So there we go. And of course, today is the day so many have been waiting for, college football. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm a huge football fan. Oh, SMU <laughs> plays today. Oh, go Mustang. There we go. Also, Texas, Texas Tech, and of course, Sarah's Pivey's Aggies. Woo! 624, 79 degrees out. After the break, a look at what's coming up a little later this morning on Texas Eats. These are inside rounds? Inside rounds, yes. Okay, and they're gonna get all seasoned up. You got some veggies off to the side as well. Yep. So what's the first thing you do? Uh, the seasoning. The seasoning, yes. okay. So you have this all pre-portioned yes. out. So you, you just open this up or what do you do? We just open it up and throw it right in here. Oh, the whole thing? The whole thing. Oh, look at you. Yeah. Okay. Like that. Just like oh. that. There you go. You can't mess this up, right? No, you because just... I already portioned it for you and put everything <laughs> that you need on there. You got some onions, it looks yes. like. Onion, there's just the ends of the onions, so it gives a good flavor and some chopped. 
So we we have a good flavor you kind of on it. Spread yours around. Yeah. I'm just gonna make it go like that. There you and go. That's what, and that's what you want. You're actually using the tops. A lot of people yeah. throw this part away. Right. Which is uh, most people do, and and it actually is beneficiary for the beef because it gives a good flavor. Some tomatoes. Just throw it on here. There we go. Like that oregano. Oh, oregano. Yep. Nice. Okay. We do two of these. Oh, look at you. Two like that. All right, now what do you got here? This looks so like this a fine is black pepper. Or? Fine black pepper. So okay. we put one of those in there. There's so many questions. We don't know what they're making. I, I really, I just need to see the final product, which you can do today, 10 o'clock, Texas Eats. It's a good tease. Look at that. All right, 628, 79 degrees out. We'll head in our next half hour. Pediatric doctor visits are on the rise. What doctors are saying about the increase and what parents need to know to keep their little ones safe. Good morning and welcome back. We're to start this half hour. There it is, a live look out at the roadways. We know it is a holiday weekend, long weekend for so many people out and about. So if you ever are driving, make sure to be safe, maintain that safe following distance, follow the rules of the road. Good morning, it's 6.30 a.m. on Saturday. Good morning, thank you so much for starting your day with us. So we know you, when it gets to be 90, 95, you when go into hibernation miserable. mode. Miserable. I, it's like, I don't know. I used to be able to, I loved it, but I, it feels hotter nowadays. Oh, I love it. I sit outside and I read and I just I sweat. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I'll, see, I'll do it early in the morning or later in the night, Sarah. Well, hey, you know, looking at those trans guide images, there are a lot more people out on the road at 630 on a oh, yeah. Saturday than usual. Of course, this weekend, very busy travel weekend. So I wanted to start with the travel forecast across the state of Texas. Uh, mostly today should be quiet across the state of Texas. If you're going up to Dallas, the weather will be very similar to here. Upper 90s, just less humid up in DFW because they're farther from the ocean. Uh, Port A will be Port Aran Kansas area about 90 degrees, partly cloudy. Houston, partly cloudy, 94. And El Paso out west, 93 degrees. Not as hot as El Paso could be. And let's say you're going down to the beach, maybe Port Aransas, Corpus Christi. Today, near 90 degrees, low rip current risk all weekend long. The winds will be a little stronger today, uh, so a little choppy on the water. So the water temperature, bathtub. 88 degrees is the water temperature both today and tomorrow near 90 both days as well. Wave height about two feet, not real significant chance for rain along the coast today. So again, pretty nice to head out to the local beaches if you want to head out there. Uh, current conditions outside the clouds have worked their way back in this morning at 79 degrees south southwest winds at 10 miles per hour. A lot of people are going to be enjoying our city today and throughout the weekend. So if you're heading out to the Pearl or to the Riverwalk, anywhere around San Antonio, it's going to be hot, especially after noon. Noon will be at 91 degrees, 99 for the high, mostly sunny skies. Southeast winds today, 5 to 15 miles per hour. Sun will set at 752, and it'll be a nice uh, evening, mild evening with temperatures back down near 80 degrees by midnight. Now, coming up in the forecast, we are going to talk about the tropics. We're still in the middle of the Atlantic hurricane se season, and there does look like a possibility for development in the Gulf of Mexico. We'll also be talking about our rain chances this Memorial Day weekend. There is a chance for rain, but I'll give you more details coming up in just a bit. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, one man is in jail for setting a woman on fire. The incident happened earlier this week in the 500 block of Maddox Drive. According to an arrest affidavit, 43-year-old Roberto Cocolam poured gasoline on a woman and use a lighter to start a fire. The report says she was taken to the hospital with burns covering her head, shoulders and chest. Cocolum was later arrested in Frio County and is now facing charges of aggravated assault. Well, the school year really has just begun for so many districts in and around the state. But when it comes to getting back to the physical classroom, districts around Texas are getting hit hard by this pandemic. Now, so many questions about how to actually respond. The Texas Education Agency, the TEA, says at least 45 small school districts across the Lone Star State, they've been forced to temporarily stop in-person learning because of COVID. Now, the shutdowns have affected about 42,000 students. Now, this comes as cases cause have plagued administrators, COVID caseloads, leaving districts scrambling to figure out what to do next. A lot of teachers say they have fewer tools to now fight the spread of the virus. Well, small illness can become a major concern for parents, especially during this pandemic, and pediatric doctor visits have nearly doubled in the last few weeks. That's right. Booking a same-day appointment with your kid's pediatrician or in urgent care, nearly impossible nowadays. Some pediatric urgent cares, they are warning parents of the limited availability. Doctors say it's not just COVID-19 concerns leading to the rush. Patty Santos has a story. 
We're not seeing six sick children. We're just seeing a lot of children. Pediatricians say COVID concerns followed by the kids returning to the classroom, picking up familiar illnesses, have them flooded with calls and visits. And there was more illness to start going back into school, and now everybody's sharing it. Patient visits have doubled for Dr. John Fitch at Heritage Pediatrics. He's working extra hours. Same goes for Little Spurs Pediatrics Urgent Care, where they've had to turn away patients for the first time in their history. A couple weeks ago, we were just not able to meet the demand of, of patients um, such that we were having, you know, hour to hour waits. And our providers were just unable to physically get through um, a, a day. The majority of visits have to do with COVID concerns and documentation required by school districts. We're seeing a lot of kids that actually don't have COVID, but um, they're being screened to make sure that they do or, or to see if they do or they don't have COVID. The majority of cases, doctors say, are just kids sick with a common cold or injuries. Suggestions from doctors, keep your sick kids hydrated and if the usual pain reliever and fever reducing medicine isn't working and you have concerns, call the pediatrician's office. Most have on-call doctors. You can better your chances of getting an appointment at a pediatric urgent care by booking early in the morning. It's going to be challenging, I believe, at least through the fall. And, and I imagine this year we'll have a flu season, so that's probably going to add to our um, some of our challenges we'll have. That was Patty Santos reporting. Doctors say you have to remind your kids to wear the masks and keep washing your hands as much as possible. Keep them healthy. Now, telemedicine also available at some pediatric clinics. Some doctors are doing visits in their parking lots, all in an effort to stop the spread of COVID. Doctors also urging parents and children over the age of 12 years old to get the vaccine and, of course, the flu shot. If you have any questions about any of this, we have all that right now. Just head to ksat.com. A Floresville man grateful to be alive after dismissing the safety precautions amid this pandemic. 29 year old Luis Garcia confronted death and hopes his experience will help others. Garcia admits he thought he didn't need the vaccine and didn't think much about wearing a mask after catching COVID. What started as a fever got so bad he had to be placed on a breathing machine to help his heart and lungs. So I thought I'd probably be asymptomatic or minor symptoms. And next thing I know, when I got it, um, I was near on my deathbed. Do get the vaccine, do your social distancing, and do wear a mask. Well, there is a list of pop-up vaccine clinics around town on our website. Today, the first clinic will happen at Edgewood ISD Theater on Land Street starting from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Ivermectin, a drug that's been in the news a lot, now part of a new study at UT Health San Antonio. It's sometimes referred to use treatment for human infections, but mostly it's actually a dewormer for livestock. Now, Ivermectin used for horses, not meant for humans, but it's been such a problem the FDA has put out warnings not to use it. Now, Ivermectin and two other drugs meant for humans are part of a new national COVID treatment study, and they're asking for volunteers. It's an interesting study because it's going to use drugs that are approved for other indications. To participate, you need to be at least 30 years old with a positive COVID test in the last 10 days. For more criteria or how to sign up, go to the Active 6 website, which is active6study.org. We have all this info in a story right now, ksat.com. We want to say a big thank you to all of our KSAT viewers who called in yesterday to help our neighbors in Louisiana. That's right. Get this more than $10,000 raised to help the Red Cross get food and so many supplies to all the communities in Louisiana who desperately need it. So if you would like to help in other ways, the San Antonio Food Bank is still looking for volunteers. We have a link to sign up right now on KSAT.com. Time now is 640, 79 degrees out. Well, if you're getting ready to head out the door this morning, be ready to pay a little extra at the pump. Just ahead, we're talking about the rise in gas prices. And if you are heading out, well, don't think you're going to have to worry about rain today. 79 degrees now. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey for your full long weekend forecast. Well, if you're heading out for a Labor Day weekend road trip, expect busy highways and even higher gas prices. In fact, we're paying nearly a dollar more per gallon than we did last year when we were much more locked down. 12 in your sides, Marilyn Moritz looks at why and when you can see some relief. 
Frank Martinez will be laboring this holiday weekend. He's a Lyft driver, feeling the pinch at the pump. With the job I do, I fill up a lot. I fill up every day, so yeah, definitely. I see it. <laughs> yeah, now it adds up. The price of a gallon jumped nine cents here in just the past week. More expensive to travel. Making this the most expensive Labor Day fill up in seven years. One reason, a surge in demand for a little road trip and getaway. Overall, AAA anticipates that Labor Day uh, weekend, we will see travel numbers that could meet or maybe even exceed pre-pandemic levels. The other reason, Hurricane Ida. It knocked out about 15% of the U.S. refining capacity. Still, analysts tell us while you may see price fluctuations this weekend, don't expect a big spike. But there are some positives. San Antonio is paying some of the cheapest gas in the country and this bump at the pump is temporary. Really, Labor Day is the unofficial end of the summer driving season, so typically gasoline demand falls and typically prices will fall along with that. How fast and how far they'll fall depends on the spread of COVID and how fast refineries can come back online. Analysts say expect relief down the road by the end of this month. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Yeah, a lot of people are traveling this weekend. A lot of people are going to be wanting to know what the weather is like outside of San Antonio. If you're traveling across the state of Texas today, it's going to be quiet across the state of Texas as a general rule, although very hot. By tomorrow and Monday, there are going to be some areas of rain across Texas, and we'll talk about that in a bit. Uh, for now, though, at least it's 79 degrees, cloudy skies, and it's 76 up in New Braunfels, 73 at Bernie Sage Airfield, 75 in Tarpley. These clouds are going to be very limited to the morning hours here because we're going to quickly see plenty of sunshine. 81 at Stinson, 76 in Comfort, and 74 up in Kerrville. In Del Rio, you're at 82 degrees right now 79 in Catula and 76 in Victoria. All right for today's forecast as I mentioned just going to be plain old hot. All right we're going to be at 91 at noon and mostly sunny so the skies are going to clear very quickly 95 at 2. The high temperature forecast for 99 degrees today in San Antonio. It is possible that we could reach 100 degrees today or tomorrow for the first time technically this year so far. Uh, now the sun will set at 752 and it's going to be a mild evening. We'll be seeing temperatures cool down to 80 degrees by uh, midnight. Southeast winds at 5 to 15 miles per hour. Now one thing that's all right about this heat is that in the afternoon it's not going to be as humid. All right. This morning our dew points are in the 70s, which is oppressively humid. You step outside, feels like you're walking through a wall of water, right? But by the afternoon, look at this. Dew points go down into the 50s in spots, which is not all that bad, but it's still going to be hot outside. Don't get me wrong. It's just not going to be as humid during the peak heating hours of the day. On the radar and satellite, a good complex of showers is working its way through Kansas and parts of Missouri right now. Uh, now, this is all associated with the low, which is situated in the Midwest, and behind it, we've got this cool front. It's very typical this time of year to see cool fronts start to emerge uh, off of the Rockies or off of the Pacific. And we're not going to see any cooler weather from this front by any means. It's going to stay hot for the foreseeable future. Although this front is going to spark off some showers and storms across central Texas tomorrow. As you can see in the future cast, anywhere from San Angelo to Waco, there are going to be some storms tomorrow afternoon. These will generate outflow boundaries or rain cooled air that could in turn spark a few isolated showers generally north of Highway 90 in the hill country tomorrow afternoon. Chance for rain in San Antonio, 20% between the hours of 3 p.m. and 7 p.m. Then looking ahead to Monday, Labor Day itself, we do have a slightly better chance for rain in the afternoon, again, 2 p.m. 7 to 7 p.m. as that front stalls to our north, again, generating more outflow boundaries and the potential for isolated to widely scattered thunder showers. Now, the chance for rain on San in uh, on Labor Day in San Antonio in the metro area is 30%, so a little bit better than Monday. And we're not anticipating severe weather, but if you do get a shower, it will be heavy. The rain will be heavy at times, and it could produce some lightning as well. So just to reiterate those rain chances, nothing today, not at today, but by tomorrow, Sunday in the afternoon, 20%. Afternoon Monday, Labor Day, 30%. Tuesday, 20% as we still deal with uh, that lingering uh, stationary boundary. Now, I promise to look at the tropics. 
6. We do have Hurricane Larry, a major hurricane, Category 3 hurricane, expected to strengthen to at least Category 4 status. But this is mainly going to be a hurricane for the fishes. All right, it's, it's going to stay out in the Atlantic, although it could impact Bermuda by Thursday. A and then looking at the Gulf of Mexico, there's an area of unorganized shower activity and thunderstorms over the Yucatan Peninsula. This is expected to move into the Gulf and has about a 30% chance of development in the middle of the Gulf of Mexico over the next five days. Now, as of right now, it does not look like it's going to be an issue for our Texas coasts, but we'll keep you updated. And of course, Atlantic hurricane season lasts until the end of November, so we've got a long time to keep an eye on the tropics. Other than that, it's going to be a mostly quiet Labor Day weekend with a few isolated showers and storms. Man, looking at some of those transguide images, looks like people are out on the roads getting ready to travel for Labor Day weekend. So stay safe if you're driving. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. 650, 79 degrees out. Well, important news if you're about to take a trip after the break, some things you want, you won't want to forget. No, don't want to forget that toothbrush. No. Well, the Delta variant staffing shortages and bad weather are causing a lot of flight cancellations and major delays, leaving thousands of people stranded. That's why it's so important to be prepared for anything. RJ Marquez has some things to keep in mind when it comes to packing for your next trip. First, whether your luggage gets lost or you're sleeping unexpectedly at the airport, you want to make sure you've got the bare necessities in your carry-on. A toothbrush, travel size toothpaste, and a change of clothes should be at the top of your list. A number one rule when traveling is to have all your medications handy. The TSA says medication can be stored in both carry-on and checked bags. They recommend you put your meds in your carry-on since you never know when a sudden delay or cancellation could happen. If you end up having to spend the night at the airport, at some point you'll want to freshen up. With full-size shampoo and body wash not allowed through security, your best option is a travel-size dry shampoo and cleansing wipes. Also, it's important you carry a phone charger around as a precaution. It's always a good idea to have a portable charger in case you are stranded in a place where there are no outlets. And make sure you are prepared to spend a night at a hotel in case you miss your connecting flight. Set some cash aside for emergencies. And last but not least, remember to bring extra face masks, preferably disposable ones so you don't have to worry about washing them. And there are some other items that can help you in case you get stranded at an airport. You'll appreciate having cozy accessories with you when you're waiting around for your flight. A sleep mask, a cozy blanket, a small pillow, and a good pair of headphones will all make your experience more bearable. RJ Marcus, KSAT 12 News. When you travel, what is your go-to? What is the one thing you know you can't forget? Charger. Oh, that's a good one, because if your flight gets delayed, you're sitting there for hours. Yeah, but then you end up being like on like a, a lot of them have like restaurants and mm. but they're so packed. Those like prime yeah. charging spots, you're like in a weird place on the floor. Happens to me every time. I tried to stay away from people before COVID. Now even more so. Yeah. <laughs> time now, 655, 79 degrees out. Take a look at these lotto numbers. Pick three, eight, three, two, fireball three, daily four, one, eight, four, seven, fireball nine. And your cash five, four, five, six, 16, 31. Here we go, Mega Millions. We know one person won a million dollars, right? Yeah, good for them. We got all five numbers. All right, 7, 10, 12, 61, 65, big number three, Mega Plier 2. Good luck. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, the Northeast recovering from historic rain and devastating flooding. The death toll on the rise and the massive cleanup ahead as President Biden surveys the hurricane damage in Louisiana, where hundreds of thousands are still without power. Plus, holiday travel concerns, the CDC urging unvaccinated Americans to stay home over Labor Day weekend and why the booster shot rollout could be delayed. And Naomi Osaka announcing another break from tennis after her emotional and shocking loss at the U.S. Open. It's all ahead here on GMA. All right, I want to show you guys the trans guide image. Usually on a Saturday at 7 o'clock in the morning, it's pretty <laughs> dead out there. But it is Labor Day weekend, a lot of travel. This is a 410 at Ingram. You can see just how many people are out and about getting on the road, starting their extended weekend. Well, today in San Antonio, it's going to be hot, mostly sunny, and uh, 99 degrees for the afternoon high temperature. We are going to have a shot at isolated rain tomorrow in the afternoon, 3 to 7 p.m., north of Highway 90, only a 20 percent. A slightly better chance on Labor Day itself. Your Labor Day weekend should not be a washout, though. Again, most of those rain chances are going to be limited into to the afternoon hours and isolated in nature.
right. Sarah Thank you, Sarah. Sarah. Thank you so much. If you're out and about, be safe. Remember that following distance. Get to where you need to go safely. We'll see you back here today. Live from KSAT 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. This morning, a pregnant teenager shot in the back. Investigators now searching for the person responsible. We have the latest. And an update to the ongoing legal battle in Texas over new abortion laws. We have the details in just a bit. And taking a live look out at the Alamo City, 79 degrees to start your Saturday morning. A long weekend for so many people. A lot of people already traveling. We're going to have your full forecast with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. But for now, good morning, 8 o'clock this Saturday, August 4th. Thank you so much for starting your long weekend with us. We're just coming off the weekend. Yeah, you know. Thursday, Fridays are our weekends, <laughs> but I also consider this our weekend too. It's true. This is all fun. Great fun. Did you make it outside? Yeah, yes and no. The mosquitoes are bad. The mosquitoes are bad. I the sun the was blaring. It was gorgeous out there if you liked the heat, but Sarah Spivey, you escaped the heat. Oh, I did. I ended up going to Iowa to visit with my grandfather. By the way, the weather in Iowa this time of year is Wonderful. It was in the 50s in the morning and the 70s in the afternoon. Yeah, C coming back to that heat, though, we are uh, going to have a very hot Labor Day uh, weekend. I want to show you a travel forecast, Texas travel cast today across the state of Texas. It'll be generally hot and quiet. One exception up in the panhandle, there will be some storms. Meanwhile, tomorrow, Sunday, some storms will develop across central Texas. Showers and storms will develop across central Texas. And we do have a small chance for rain in San Antonio tomorrow in the afternoon, but especially on Labor Day in the afternoon. Now, it's still a small chance on Labor Day for uh, isolated to scattered showers and storms, mainly in the afternoon hours. But coming up in the forecast, we'll talk a little bit more about our chances for rain on Labor Day itself. But if you are planning on traveling, maybe you're coming back uh, to your hometown on Monday. Just know that there are going to be some showers and storms across central Texas and south central Texas. Meanwhile, here in San Antonio, starting off our Saturday, mostly cloudy. We're seeing these morning clouds start to break up. It's 79 degrees. We do have a heat index. It already feels like 82 because of the high humidity. Uh, and it's 77 in New Braunfels. 81 in Del Rio, 72 in Rock Springs, 78 in Catula, 76 in Gonzales, and 76 in Kennedy. Today, though, if you're wanting to maybe go out tubing on the Guadalupe or the Comal Rivers, it is going to be a hot day for that. We're going to be looking at high temperatures all the way up in the upper 90s, close to 100 degrees this afternoon. If we hit 100, that'll be the first time we technically hit 100 this year. Uh, but it's going to be hot, it's going to be sunny, and the UV index will be extreme with the potential uh, skin damage time within 20 minutes or so. So uh, use caution today if you're going to be outside, but enjoy the summery weather. I'll be back with a look at those rain chances over the next 24 to 48 hours in just a few minutes. Max, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, the search is on for the person responsible for shooting a pregnant teenager. Here's what we know right now. This all happened just before midnight. This is a home in the 11,200 block of a Dublin woods. That's on the far west side. That's where Bear County deputies believe someone drove by, fired multiple shots at the home, hitting a 17 year old pregnant teen in the back. She was taken to University Hospital in serious but stable condition. BCSO right now trying to figure out what exactly led up to the shooting. And we also know as of right now, no suspects are in custody. Well, missing weapons leading to a petite police officer being pulled from the force. Isaac Segura is accused in this case. The petite police department says officers noticed two weapons were missing from the department's property room back on August 19th. The Texas Rangers were called in to help with an internal investigation. Nearly a week later, Segura was put in handcuffs and taken to jail. Both weapons were recovered and termination paperwork was processed for Segura. The Texas Rangers say the investigation remains active and ongoing. Top story this morning, a new ruling helping to shield multiple health clinics from dozen of whist, what dozens of whistleblower lawsuits. The Associated Press reporting a state district judge in Austin issuing a temporary restraining order after a request from Planned Parenthood. Now, this heartbeat law in Texas, one of the most restrictive across the country's as of September 1st, the Texas law limits abortions within the first six weeks of pregnancy. Uh, the law does not offer exemptions even for victims of rape. The law also allowed citizens to file lawsuits against those who helped or conducted the procedure. Now, the latest ruling bars lawsuits from the nonprofit group Texas Right to Life, its legislative director, and it also bars the lawsuits from 100 unidentified individuals. But 
Not clear if anyone else could file a lawsuit. Meanwhile, Raices, a nonprofit centered around migrant families, says they are now working around the law by offering women a way to get an abortion outside of the state of Texas. And the Texas Right to Life group actually reacted to this ruling, saying they, quote, expect an impartial court will dismiss Planned Parenthood's lawsuit, end quote. You can read much more about this developing story right now. Just head to KSAT.com. Well, to the latest now on the coronavirus here in Bear County, the pandemic leading to five more deaths. That includes Bear County Deputy Ronald Butler. The 56 year old was battling COVID-19 since late July and he had been in the hospital. He was pronounced dead yesterday afternoon. 1,218 COVID-19 patients are in our hospitals this morning. That's a decrease from yesterday. There was also a decrease in our seven day average, but we continue to see 1,100 COVID-19 cases each day. Health officials reminding you to keep safe and keep using those safety precautions in mind during the Labor Day holiday. And speaking of the Labor Day holiday, the CDC urging unvaccinated people across the country not to travel this holiday weekend over concerns that traveling could fuel more COVID outbreaks. U.S. daily cases are now already up nearly a thousand percent just over the last two months. Seven states are at or above ICU capacity of 90% statewide and pediatric hospital admissions are at their highest point since the pandemic has started. ABC's Trevor Alt is in New York City with the latest. This morning, health officials fearing Labor Day weekend could further fan the flames of the pandemic. Doctors in Oregon warning if you get sick or injured, they may not have a hospital bed available for you. The emergency department and the ICU is under incredible strain right now. The CDC now warning people if you're not fully vaccinated this weekend, you should not travel. And that recommendation extends to children. The rate of hospitalization for children was nearly four times higher in states with the lowest overall vaccination coverage when compared to states with high overall vaccination vaccination coverage at Wolfson's Children's Hospital in Jacksonville, Florida. Pediatric COVID patients have nearly doubled since August 1st. This week, two children dying in a single 24 hour span. Doctors voicing their frustration. How many children dying is too many? Social distancing, disinfection, mask wearing. That's a small price to pay. And with just weeks until the nation is supposed to begin the rollout of booster shots September 20th, the New York Times reports health officials are advising the White House to scale back that plan for now because they need more time to collect and review necessary data. Moderna, Pfizer and Johnson and Johnson all say they've submitted their booster data for evaluation from the FDA, though the agency's independent advisory board isn't set to take up the booster issue until September 17th. And at least one board member, Dr. Paul Offit, doesn't think boosters are needed right now. All the data shows that if you've gotten two doses, you are protected against serious illness. And I think people need to be reassured about that. And before we've even made it out of this pandemic, the White House has now outlined a $65 billion plan to prepare for any potential future pandemics based on the lessons we've learned from COVID-19. The White House called this an economic and moral imperative. Trevor Alt, ABC News, New York. Time now is 8.08, 79 degrees out. It's another exciting night of high school football in South Texas, Max. That's right, we're gonna have the best highlights, best catches, touchdowns, and tackles from all of our local games. And just ahead, we'll tell you about a brand new app designed to help make day-to-day -day tasks easier for those with vision impairment. And let's take a live look out at the Alamo City. We know a lot of people already on the road this morning. A lot of people traveling for Labor Day weekend. We're going to tell you what you can expect if you do plan to hit the roads in just a bit. Well, helping others around the world at a touch of a button, and it doesn't take much of your time either. That's right. The Be My Eyes smartphone app allows users to connect with blind and or low vision individuals to help with simple day to day tasks. RJ Marquez explains how it all works. It's the little things in life that matter most. Things like making sure you're taking the right medication, making sure your shoes match, or even just navigating a TV menu. But not everyone has the ability to do these tasks alone. That's where Be My Eyes steps in. It's a free mobile app with the goal of making the world more accessible for blind and low vision people. Here's how it works. Anyone 17 years or older can sign up as a user or volunteer. Video calls are then connected based on your time zone and language. 
If you get a call, the app will send you a push alert to answer. Then, once you've answered the call, a live one-way video, two-way audio call starts, allowing the volunteers to see what's in front of the user's camera and provide verbal support. The tasks are usually completed in just a few minutes. And if you're busy, there's no need to answer. Someone else will get it. As of right now, there are over 330,000 blind users signed up and over 5 million volunteers. If you decide to sign up as a volunteer, just know that it might be a while before you actually receive a call for help. But the day it happens, it can be pretty exciting. RG Marcus, KSAT 12 News. Really interesting there. Thank you, RJ. All right, outside right now, you can see that these morning clouds are quickly going away. You know, we had overcast skies for a period of time, but just within the last hour or so, those clouds are starting to go away. It's going to be a mostly sunny and hot day across South Central Texas. 79 degrees outside right now, and we're only getting started as far as the heat goes. Uh, we've got winds from the southwest at about 10 miles per hour. Up in the hill country, a little bit more comfortable, but still muggy. 74 degrees in Kerrville, 72 in Rock Springs, 78 in Catula, 76 in Kennedy, 76 in Gonzales, 77 in New Braunfels, a balmy 81 already for our friends in Valverde County in Del Rio. So on the future cast, you can see there are the morning clouds, but watch how quickly they go away. It's going to be a mostly sunny and hot day. No chance for rain today for us. Uh, high temperature right around 99 degrees. Again, it's a technicality. We still have yet to hit 100 degrees technically at the airport, but with a forecast high of 99, we could very well come close to it. And if we do hit 100, it'd either be today or tomorrow. So keep that in mind. 101 though in Del Rio, 100 in Creese of Springs, 103 in Catula. 98 for the high in New Braunfels and 95 in Kerrville. There is one thing that, you know, kind of grasping at straws here, but it, but it's something. It's not going to be as humid in the afternoon, all right? Uh, right now, dew points are oppressively high. It's very humid outside. You can feel it. But in the afternoon hours during the peak heating of the day, those dew points should be in the 50s. So as long as you find some shade, it shouldn't be all that bad outside. Now, looking at today's forecast, 84 at 10, 91 already in the 90s at noon around lunch 99 for that afternoon high south southeast winds at 5 to 15 miles per hour and the sun will set right around 752 this evening on the radar and satellite it is quiet across the state of texas but you look up to the north and you can see up we'll have a check of the for uh, the forecast across the tropics for a lot of folks i know still interested in the atlantic hurricane season potential development in the gulf i'll tell you what that's all about in, in the next half hour or so max sarah Thank you, Sarah. There's Bobby. Thank you so much. 816, 79 degrees out. Well, another round of high school football is in the books. Let's go. These Friday night lights, they are bigger and brighter than ever. We have the top scores and highlights from just some of the last night's matchups. Next. Good morning. Welcome back. And happy Saturday. Time to strike up the band. Get all the nachos ready. We got football to talk about. Brackenridge Eagles taking on Lee at the Rock Pile. First quarter, Lee on the Brack 44. Isaiah Carrillo dumps it off to Oscar Castro Gonzalez on the flat. Shakes the defender. Rumble, big man. Rumble all the way to the 19-20 yard gain. And then a few plays later. Oh, got to love the option plays. Keeping it. Scores nine yards out. 7-0 Lee. The final from Alamo Stadium. Brackenridge 35. Lee 27. A little barn burner action on that one. All right, here we go. Got to keep the spirit alive, keep the enthusiasm rolling. But Harlandale Indians up 22 when Kasa got there. They have Edison punting from the back of the end zone. The whole gang of Indians rushed in to punt the block. You rarely see that nowadays. Right in the back of the end zone. Safety. we do a little safety dance. Help Harlandale take a 24-0 lead. Final, Harlandale 31, Edison nothing. All right, McCollum Cowboys mascot. Pretty popular in these parts. Taking a selfie with a real officer of the law. Navarro jumps off sides. McCollum getting the free play. Running back Isaiah Leffler breaking through the line. Picks up 18 before getting taken down. Leffler gets the ball again this time. Wait for it. Wait for it. Quick bounce outside. Ooh, sidestep. He's almost untouched. And then boom, six drags him into the end zone. There we go. Cowboys riding all over Navarro. 42-19 in the second quarter. When we leave the final, McCollum 65-13. And here we go. Great game at Bulldog Stadium. Battle of 1604 Somerset taking on Southside Cardinals. Trying to rally in the fourth quarter. Quarterback, personal fan favorite, Richard Torres, scrambling, finding some space on the sideline. Dives in three yard score. They go for two. They don't get it. So they're trailing 7 6. Later in the fourth, Cardinals down 10 6. 
driving for the go-ahead score with a ball. Oh no, the ball pops loose from the running back's hands. Fighting for yardage, Bulldog senior Josh Corn on the recovery. Bulldogs keep a four-point lead, and that's when they keep the game. Heading to big game coverage, scoreboard for that final, and so much more. Somerset losing or winning to Southside 10 to 6. What a close game. Navarro McCollum 65. Yeah, that's not that's actually correct. 65 to 13. Harlandale 31. Edison 0. Lee 27. Brack 35. So what a slate. You even made it out to some Friday Night Lights last night. I'm trying to. Yeah. Exploring. Woman of the people. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. What's your go-to football food? Popcorn. Smart. Yeah. Wow. It's right. an easy snack. 822, 79 degrees out. And still ahead on GMSA, David Ooh. Elder. I want that for football. <laughs> Has a preview of what's coming up on Texas Eats. Right in front of us here. This is kind of like the spectacle that you can get when you come out here. Talk to us about this dish. So we bring the cheese from uh, France, from the French Alps. The, the raclette in France is a very classical dish. Uh, Switzerland, France, uh, it's melted cheese uh, that we traditional serve over uh, uh, boiled potatoes or baked potatoes. Um, and uh, we usually use all kind of uh, cured meat and, uh, and French cornichons. If you love cheese, you have to get the raclette. It is served table side, and it's a half a cheese wheel that's melted on top, and they scrape it right off onto a piece of baguette, and it is absolutely delicious. You get some of the cured meat, a little bit of the pickle action going on. It's a really good bite. In front of us are some of the items on their new brunch menu out here. Croque Madame, which is a classic French uh, dish for brunch, you know, uh, it's uh, an upgrade Croque Monsieur. Uh. Have you had that before? No. But I really want it. It's delicious. <laughs> All right, time now. 827, 79 degrees out. And there's an, a new potential treatment for COVID-19 that's getting attention. And researchers here in San Antonio are looking for volunteers. We'll tell you about it when GMSA continues. Good morning. Welcome back. And happy Saturday, 830 this morning, September 4th. Can't believe we're already in Labor Day weekend. I just realized it's September. Like yeah. you just said it. And I was like, oh, wow, we're here. The problem is, Sarah, it doesn't feel like what mm. people think September should feel like, even though we are in South Texas and it does get hot in September. Yeah, our average high temperature this time of year is 93, and we've been about five-ish degrees above that. So it is a little hotter than average, but still, we should be used to this heat here in the September months. Now, this is actually potentially going to be one of our hottest weekends so far this year uh, because temperatures will be flirting with that triple digit mark. I want to show you outside right now. These clouds are clearing, but it's still mostly cloudy at the moment. 79 degrees. Winds are from the south southwest at about 10 miles per hour. We do already have a heat index. It feels like 82 outside, although the humidity won't be as bad this afternoon. On the satellite picture, you can see these morning clouds here extending from Gonzales all the way out west toward Del Rio. And again, they're going to go away here throughout the rest of the morning. And then the afternoon should be mostly sunny. 79 at the airport, as I just mentioned, 77 in New Braunfels, 73 in Rock Springs, 81 in Del Rio, warm in Del Rio this morning. Now it is a big travel day. Uh, and here in San Antonio, if you're planning on staying locally, just Bet on the heat, all right? 91 at noon, 99 for the afternoon high, mostly sunny skies, southeast winds 5 to 10 to even 15 miles per hour. Sun will set at 752. But if you are traveling outside of San Antonio today, know that in Dallas it'll be 99 degrees and partly cloudy, mostly sunny in Houston, 95. Uh, Port Aransas, it'll be 89 degrees for the high temperature, so not as bad. And on South Padre, it'll be 97. El Paso clocking in in the mid 90s. If you are going to go to Port Aransas or Corpus, Christy. It's actually going to be great uh, beach weather today. Near 90 degrees both today and tomorrow. A little windy today uh, on near Port Aransas and Corpus Christi. Southeast winds gusting up to 20 miles per hour, but wave feet of only about wave height of only about two feet. So not all that bad today and tomorrow and very little chance for rain. Now speaking of uh, the Gulf, we'll be taking a look at the tropics coming up in just a bit and an update on rain chances locally over the weekend. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, one man in jail being accused of setting a woman on fire. Here's what we know right now. This all happened earlier this week, 500 block of Maddox Drive. So we now have a mugshot of the suspect, 43-year-old Roberto Coco Lamb. According to the arrest affidavit, 
He's suspected of pouring gasoline on that woman, the victim, then using a lighter to start the fire. The report says that the victim was taken to the hospital with burns covering her head, shoulders and chest. The suspect later arrested in Frio County. He is now facing an aggravated assault charge. Well, the school year has just begun, but when it comes to getting back to the classroom, districts around Texas are being hit hard by the pandemic. And now there are more questions about how to respond. The Texas Education Agency, the TEA, says at least 45 small school districts across the state have been forced to temporarily stop offering in-person classes because of COVID-19 cases. The shutdowns have affected about 42,000 students. This comes as cases have plagued administrators COVID-19 caseloads have left districts scrambling and many teachers say they have fewer tools to fight the spread of the virus. Well, ivermectin, a drug that's been in the news a lot lately, now part of a new study at UT Health San Antonio, sometimes used to treat human infections, but mostly it is a dewormer for livestock. There's two different versions. There's the human version and a veterinary version. The ivermectin used for horses is not the same one meant for humans, but it's been such a problem lately that the FDA has actually had to put out warnings for people not to use it. But now the human version of ivermectin and two other drugs meant for people are part of a new national COVID-19 treatment study. And now they're ready for volunteers to participate. You need to be at least 30 years old and you need to have a positive COVID test in the last 10 days. If you're interested, we have a link for more of the criteria right now. Just head to KSAT.com. Well, he was hard to miss amid the chaos at the Capitol in January. Jacob Chansley, who wore the furry hat with horns, now pleading guilty to a felony charge. He is now also asking a judge to be released from jail while he awaits sentencing. Chansley has been in jail for nearly eight months since he was arrested. He even quit eating two times during being in jail. He demanded authorities gave him organic food. Prosecutors estimate that now he could face 41 to 51 months in prison. Sentencing scheduled for November 17th. Well, in California, firefighters in South Lake Tahoe making progress against a threatening wildfire. Lighter winds have helped keep the Caldor fire from spreading. However, an evacuation order is still in place in the area as crews work to get the blaze under control. At this time, there is no timeline for when evacuation orders may be lifted. So far, more than 200,000 acres have been burned. And we've told you about the major power problems in Louisiana after Hurricane Ida ripped through the state. So NASA releasing this satellite image to show the power grid before the storm. That's what you're looking at right now on your screen. This is the greater New Orleans area. The image of bright lights taken on August 9th. All right, and then here we go. 20 days later, Hurricane Ida hit. Take a look at what's left behind. This image also from NASA showing the impact of those power outages. Much of the power in New Orleans expected to be restored up by Wednesday, but for other communities surrounding New Orleans, it could take longer. And President Joe Biden visiting Louisiana, getting a firsthand look at all that damage, promising to leave no community behind. ABC's Elwin Lopez is in southern Louisiana with the very latest on those struggling to meet the most basic needs in the disaster zone. This morning, the despair in Louisiana is still palpable. On Friday, President Biden surveying what Ida left behind nearly a week ago, vowing to rebuild those areas hardest hit. I know you all are frustrated about how long it takes to restore power. Uh, it's dangerous work. We're working 24-7 with the energy companies, and we'll get through this together. And ahead of that storm, more than 800 nursing home residents were evacuated to a warehouse in Independence. Now four are dead. Three of them classified by the coroner as storm related. ABC News obtaining these images showing the crowded conditions inside. The state's attorney general now launching an investigation. It was terrible. The mattress is on the ground. It was horrible. The five gallon can. Was Loretta was there for five days. Her daughter saying she wasn't allowed to visit her mother during that time. ABC News reached out to the nursing home's owner, but has yet to receive a response. He reportedly told a local station that he believes they did a good job given the circumstances. And across the state, community members helping one another, even those without, giving to those most in need as hundreds of thousands remain in the dark many without running water. Fuel hard to come by in hard hit areas like Laplace. 
dozens of cars lined up here waiting for the gas station. Many of these people have been waiting for hours. Lines like these all over southeastern Louisiana. Lauren Sims tells me he has a heart condition as he waits in line to fill up his tank. I'll be sitting in the car, you know, because I don't have electricity. I got to cool off because I take heart medicine and stuff. And that was ABC's Elwin Lowe with Focus reporting. KSAT viewers stepping in to help our neighbors in Louisiana. Many called into our food and bank yesterday, and we just wanted to thank you guys and thank all of our viewers and give you an update on those donations. More than $10,000 collected to help the Red Cross and get food and supplies into many communities in Louisiana that are so desperately in need right now. Thank you for taking the time to call in. If you would like to continue to help, there still are other ways. The San Antonio Food Bank is still looking for volunteers for its efforts. We have a link for that right now on how to sign up on KSAT.com. Time now is 8.38, 80 degrees out. And just ahead, a new episode of KSAT Explains dives into homelessness in San Antonio. We have a preview and how you can help. And before we head to break, a quick live look out at the Alamo City. Okay, see some blue skies, some puffy clouds, 80 degrees now. What does the rest of the weekend look like? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a bit. Well, a new episode of KSAT Explains is now streaming. This week, it's all about homelessness in San Antonio. KSAT Explains team tackling the growing debate over how to compassionately handle homeless encampments here in our city. Here's executive producer Brina with more. a lot about homelessness and encampments uh, working on this episode. I came in thinking, oh, you know, organizations, the city, you know, we can do this one thing and change and improve the lives of everyone. But honestly, it, start, it starts when you're born. It starts where, you know, whether you were born in poverty, what resources are available to you when you're in school about mental health. Um, and, and that continues over time. Meeting these people who live on the street, I realized the challenges that they're, that they're dealing with. Mental illness, untreated mental illness at, at times, um, not having the resources or knowledge about what, what resources are available to them if they do want to get off the street. So that's why um, the outreach workers are a crucial part of of solving homelessness. What I admire the most were these outreach workers, were the homeless providers um, who are working on this day in, day out, every single minute of the day to try to find help for these people who want the help. I'm astonished at how they're not defeated by this every single day. They said the small wins is what keeps them going. Another big takeaway take was the misconception that people have about uh, people who live on the street are unsheltered homeless. Um, it can be anyone. Uh, a lot of, I met a couple, Rhonda and Felix, who a few months before were living, you know, not in the greatest conditions, but at least had a place to call home. And now they're on the street um, trying to figure out what to do next. So things can change in a heartbeat and what I don't think people realize is that could that could be any one of us um, and I learned to have more compassion and to get involved and so if, if this is something that moves you if you see this story and you say wow I didn't know this was happening in in my city uh, I would encourage you to get involved And we have so much information about organizations that you can get involved with right now. Just head to KSAT.com. Yeah, just head over to KSAT.com slash KSAT Explains and search for this episode of Commending, our group that does oh, all yeah. the research and work on KSAT Explains. They do a great job, they so check them out. Amazing job. And Sarah Spive, you've been on a few episodes. Oh, yeah, the weather-focused the weather -focused episodes. There's mm -hmm. a couple on there. Check them out if you want. Uh, uh, there's not really too much to talk about in, in the weather today other than it's going to be hot. But over this Labor Day weekend, we are going to have a couple of shakeups in there that I want to chat about. Yeah, shakeups. That was nice, Sarah. Okay. All right, let's take a look outside. We've got 79 degrees and mostly cloudy skies.
but these clouds are going to be out of here very soon and it'll be a mostly sunny and hot day. It's 78 up in Bulverde, 77 at Bern uh, in New Braunfels, rather 81 down at Stinson, 81 at JBSA Randolph, 75 in Bandera, 76 in Kerrville and 72 out in Las Maples. You know, it won't be all that long before those trees start to try to change in Las Maples, uh, usually in November. So, all right, in Del Rio, it's 81 degrees outside right now. Warm already to start the day in Del Rio. At noon, we're already going to be at 91, 95 at 2, and 99 this afternoon. It's, that's going to be the forecast high. We, might, we may as well get to 100 degrees this afternoon. Your body won't really know too much of a difference between 99 and 100. Southeast winds at 5 to 15 miles per hour. All right, as far as the humidity goes, yes, it's very humid outside. Dew points are in the mid 70s, low to mid 70s, but... By the afternoon hours, between about 3 to 7 during the peak heating of the day, our dew points are actually going to be a little lower than normal. In fact, they'll be in the 50s at times, and so that's at least going to feel better in the shade. Now, it's still going to be a hot day, but not as humid in the afternoons. On the radar and satellite, we can see our next potential rainmaker well to our north. This is along a very weak cool front. Now, cool fronts this time of year across the central plains are very possible, but we're not going to see much cooling from this front. Instead, what we're going to see is the potential for some isolated rain. Now, Tomorrow afternoon in central Texas from San Angelo to Waco, there will be some thunderstorms and one or two of those may try to make it into the hill country. Our chance for rain tomorrow is very low, 20%. But if you live north of Highway 90, it is possible for your rain to get uh, your backyard to get a little rain. Now, then again, on Monday, when that front stalls, we do have a better chance around the metro area for some thunder showers. The chance for rain in the afternoon from 3 to 7 p.m. is about 30%. So it's not going to be a washout out for your Labor Day weekend, but I would just have that case out weather authority app handy, especially on Monday. So again, only isolated tomorrow, 20% isolated on Monday, but a little bit better of a chance, 30%. And then on Tuesday, isolated rain as well. I promise you a check of the tropics. Not really going to see much from uh, Hurricane Larry here in Texas and uh, honestly uh, in the United States, but Larry is expected to stay as a major hurricane and potentially impact Bermuda. Meanwhile, and this is something we'll be monitoring carefully, there's an area of disorganized showers and storms over the Yucatan. It's expected to move into the Gulf of Mexico and potentially develop in the northern uh, Gulf of Mexico in the next five days, about a 30% chance. This, however, does not look like it's going to be a threat to the Texas coast. We'll keep you informed though, Atlantic hurricane season, lasts all the way through the uh, end of November. All right, weather trivia. Mm. Ooh, I like this. Now, this is the 10th anniversary of, unfortunately, uh, something that destructive that happened across Texas. Mm -hmm. Okay, 10th anniversary. I'll have the answer to that in the next half hour of GMSA. I know the answer. I'm not going to say it. We literally just heard her record it. <laughs> Time <laughs> now, 848, 80 degrees out. All right, Max, go ahead. All right, another Florida High School football matchups last night. Great recap, just ahead. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Saturday. Saturday, usually college football. Before we get there, some high school highlights to tell you about Southwest Dragons band playing on as Floresville Tigers taming the Dragons up 29-6 in the third. Tigers still on the attack. Braden Fuller dropping back, beautiful pass. Nate Luther wide open over the middle, running out defenders on his way to a 29-yard touchdown. Hands up, because that's a score. 36-6 Floresville at that point. The final from the Dragon Den, Floresville 36, Southwest 13. All right, moving on. South Sand hosting Laredo United South. We're fast forward to fourth quarter. Bobcats on the verge of scoring a touchdown, but wait for it. Oh, my goodness. Rumble, big man, rumble. And then the ball rumbles loose at the three-yard line. Fernando Bernal is recovered. Julio taking it back for the touchback. Let's see this one turned out. Laredo United 28. South Sand, nothing. All right, on to Bernie, the Bernie Greyhounds. Playing host to Gregory Portland, a replacement for Sam Houston. They had COVID concerns. The Greyhounds weren't playing around, though. First quarter, third and 17 on the Wildcats, 34-yard line, where Sean Galloway rolls out to his right, throw to Kobe Hunter. Awesome name on the screen pass. Works to perfection. Hunter gets downfield blocking, steps in, almost untouched. Two defenders at the goal line, seven-point lead. Let's take a look at the... Big game coverage scoreboard. All right, Gregory Portland, 28. Bernie, Winnipeg, 35. Kennedy, 55 points. Austin Hyde Park, 7. 
What a day, what a day. Floresville 36, Southwest 13, Laredo United South 28, South San zero. But don't worry, guys, if you want more football, we have a whole slew of games today. We got Texas taking on the Raging Cajuns. Ooh. I uh, know, of okay. course, SMU. Go Ponies. They're Aggies, <laughs> they get to play today. They can see if they uh, can play for the college football playoff. There's so much, it's you need the season. I love all the optimism. 854, especially the ponies, 80 degrees out. <laughs> All right, Labor Day weekend is here, and there is a ton of fun events happening right around San Antonio. That's right, fun stuff for you and the whole family. We're going to have details right after the break. Good morning, welcome back. If you're watching, you probably already know it is Labor Day weekend. There is so much for you to do, you and the family, in and around San Antonio. That's right, so first up, the Labor Day Artisan Show at the San Antonio River Walk. It will feature vendors with pottery, jewelry, and paintings. The free event is happening now through Monday near the Chamber of Commerce and Shops at River Center. Also free on the River Walk, the Ford Parade of Lanterns. You'll be able to see 10 boats filled with illuminated lanterns. That's today and tomorrow starting at 8. And if you want to head out of town, you can check out the fair at Kendall County. You better see livestock show, rodeo, food, crafts. The fair runs through Sunday on River Road in Bernie. And then in Johnson City, you can check out the exotic resort zoo. The zoo offering a drive through option, but as Sarah Costa has warned, watch out for those zebras. You know, they like when you give them snacks. Yeah. The windows. Okay. They can get Who doesn't feisty. like free food? Love free food, love zebras. It is open from 9 to 5 all weekend. For a whole list of stuff to do, just head to KSAT.com. Time now is 8.57, 80 degrees now. We'll be right back. Good morning and welcome back. We are starting off with a live look out at the Alamo City. 9 o'clock this Saturday morning, already 80 degrees. How hot are we going to get this weekend? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. For now, good morning, 9 o'clock this Saturday, September 4th. It is Labor Day weekend. We know so many people out and about for the holiday weekend. We already saw so many people on the road this morning. Yeah, we were checking Transguide earlier. There was a lot of people out there. So everyone, if you're out there, please be safe. Now, Sarah, I know you have um, a little bit of a history tip for us. The 10 year, this is the 10 year anniversary, unfortunately, of the Bastrop County Complex fire. Now, many of us from Texas remember just how destructive this fire was. I want to show you a picture here. Uh, again, this fire, more than 1,600 residential structures were destroyed, causing up to $325 million in damage. This is the most destructive wildfire in Texas history. More than 32 2,000 acres burned, and unfortunately, two deaths were uh, caused by this fire. And even now, you drive through Bastrop, uh, and you can see the scars of, of this fire. But thankfully, you know, there, a lot of strides have been made since 2011. Now, this unfortunately was a combination of just bad things to happen. First of all, 2011, you remember the drought of 2011, all of the state of Texas in drought conditions. Then we had Tropical Storm Lee bring rain to Louisiana, but we were on the dry side of that storm. That resulted in some high winds, which furthered the fire. So again, the 10th anniversary of the most destructive wildfire in Texas began today, 10 years ago in 2011. Outside in San Antonio right now, we're experiencing mostly cloudy conditions. It's already 81 degrees. We've got south southwest winds at about 10 miles per hour. Heat index as high as 86 right now, and it is going to be a hot day for us. Mostly sunny, 91 at noon, 99 in the afternoon for that high temperature. Awfully close to 100. No rain in the forecast today for us, but we do have a chance for some isolated showers tomorrow. If you're traveling across the state of Texas today, it's going to be fairly quiet other than some rain up in the panhandle. And then by tomorrow across central Texas, there will be some thunderstorms. And finally, on Labor Day itself, if you're traveling back home, there could be some showers and storms across south central Texas. But I'll detail this more in detail for you as far as our Labor Day weekend forecast goes in San Antonio coming up in just a bit. Max. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, Bear County investigators working to figure out who was responsible for a drive-by shooting that left a pregnant teenager shot and now in the hospital. Here's what we know right now. Just before midnight, Bear County Sheriff's Office called to the 11,200 block of Dublin Woods. That's on the 
far west side. Now, we are told from people on the scene, family members and neighbors heard shots coming from the street, several bullets hitting that home. One of the bullets hitting the 17 year old pregnant woman who was inside the house. She was taken to University Hospital in serious but stable condition. BCSO now working to figure out what exactly happened and who pulled the trigger. Well, now to a new ruling is now helping shield multiple health clinics from dozens of whistleblower lawsuits. The Associated Press reporting a state district judge in Austin issued the temporary restraining order after a request from Planned Parenthood. This heartbeat law is one of the most restrictive in the United States. As of September 1st, the Texas law limits abortions within the first six weeks of pregnancy. The law does not offer exceptions for victims of rape. The law also allowed citizens to file lawsuits against those who helped or conducted the procedure. The latest ruling bars lawsuits from the nonprofit group Texas Right to Life, its legislative director, and 100 unidentified individuals, but it's not clear if anyone else could file a lawsuit. Meanwhile, RACIS, a nonprofit centered around migrant families, says they are working around the law by offering women a way to get an abortion outside of Texas. So the Texas Right to Life group reacted to the ruling, saying they, quote, we expect an impartial court will dismiss Planned Parenthood's lawsuit, end quote. You can read more about this developing story right now on KSAT.com. And Texas remains responsible for nearly $6.8 million in legal fees to those who sued the state over the voter ID law. Although the state ultimately won the fight to keep the voter ID law, a panel of the 5th U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals upholding a lower court ruling that Texas is still responsible for the millions and millions of dollars. The legal battle was over. The 2011 restrictions the state set on what forms of photo ID are accepted at the polls. All right, law enforcement are going to be out and about watching for drunk drivers this Labor Day weekend. The Department of Public Safety adding extra patrols out there, but DPS not the only agency trying to prevent drunk driving. TxDOT is launching a new campaign called Faces of Drunk Driving. They are highlighting the stories of people impacted on both sides of a drunk driving crash. That's right. Samuel King has the story. I was 15 years old at the time, and my mother was teaching me how to drive. When someone under the influence hit his head on. Jessica's story, one of the ones highlighted in the TxDOT Faces of Drunk Driving campaign, with the tagline, Drive Sober, No Regrets. This, this campaign really hits home with um, listening to the stories of the victims and families of victims and the consequences of, of uh, you know, of getting behind the wheel and drinking and driving. So the campaign also features those convicted of drunk driving and shows how their lives have changed as well. I wasn't able to find a decent job for four years from one DWI. Officials wanting to reduce the amount of drunk driving crashes in Texas and in the San Antonio region. In San Antonio alone, 85 people died in 2020 from DUI-related crashes. TxDOT spokesperson Laura Lopez says while no one died last year over Labor Day weekend from drunk driving, there were still almost two dozen alcohol-related crashes. And so our goal is to have zero fatalities, zero crashes, and that is our number one priority. Oh, Samuel King reporting that the increased enforcement will run through the weekend all the way through Monday. And if you and your family are planning on spending time in the water this holiday weekend, the Texas Department of Family and Protective Services has some reminders. First, always keep an eye on your children, especially young ones. Seventy percent of drownings here in Texas are children under five and most happen in backyard or apartment swimming pools. That's right. And it might seem like common sense, but remember to secure your swimming pool when you're not using it. Also, store water toys away from the water. Don't assume young children will use good judgment and caution around water. And as most parents out there know, you got to be ready for anything, especially when it's super hot out there. You got to make sure that those kids don't jump in the water. And they're also hydrated. That's true. Sunscreen. Hat. All right, 907, 80 degrees out. Well, after the break, we're talking about KSAT News Now and why the new viewer-driven newscast has a lot of people buzzing. As us buzz. I'm so excited to talk about it. For now, we're going to talk about safety tips. We talked about those already. I'll tell you what, though. If you are out about it, there it is. You might want to find a pool, maybe the beach this weekend, because it is going to be hot. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a bit. 
Well, this morning we want to let you know about a new show, KSAT News Now. It's a candid breakdown of the most talked about stories here in San Antonio. The show is launching on Wednesday, and it's a viewer-driven newscast that will stream on all of KSAT's digital platforms at 11 a.m., hosted by Alicia Barrera and RJ Marquez. They'll bring you reports and entertaining conversation around the biggest news of the day. You can watch it on KSAT.com and KSAT's Facebook page, our KSAT TV app as well. Congratulations, guys, and I'm excited to see um, that new show. I don't know what I'm more excited about. Am I more excited about the show or the fact that college football is back today? Actually, I'm more excited about them. So, here we go, though. If you're a college football fan, don't worry. We got you covered. Kent State, Texas A&M. Let's well, shout out to Aggies. Hey, whoop! There you go. <laughs> and we got the Raging Cajuns taking on Texas Longhorns 3-3. That's a big one. That's a big new, one. New head coach. But here's one of my favorites of the day. UTSA taking on Illinois tonight, 6.30. I say tonight, a lot of people are like, oh, that's just evening. No, 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 that's bedtime. And then, <laughs> shout out to Sarah Costa. I made sure that we had this in here. Abilene Christian, SMU. Go Mustang. There you go. I can feel the enthusiasm yeah. in your voice. Yeah. All right, Sarah Spivey, what are you doing to watch the game today? Um, I will probably watch, if it's recording, I'll watch it on TV, but there that's the key there. I've got my Aggie ring on, so I've got some good A&M spirit. I love it. <laughs> I'm ready for college football. Well, I'm also ready for fall-like weather, but <laughs> we're not going to get that anytime soon, unfortunately. Outside right now, we have got puffy cumulus clouds out there. As the morning clouds are breaking up, it is already 81 degrees, and it's humid. We've got a heat index of 86. It feels like it's in the upper 80s already this morning. It's going to be a hot day for us, no doubt about that. I want to show you the satellite imagery because this is really cool. We can see almost each individual cloud from space. We've got cloud cover from areas in Guadalupe and Wilson County, extending all the way out west through San Antonio, through Yavaldi, through the Hill Country, and into Del Rio. But these clouds are breaking up as we speak, and it is going to be a mostly sunny day. It's already warm, as we mentioned, 80 in Hondo, 83 in Catula, 81 in Pleasant. 81 in New Braunfels and 82 in Del Rio. It's still in the 70s though up in the hill country, 73 in Rock Springs. Here's that future cast showing these morning clouds that I just showed you the satellite version of and then they go away over the next couple of hours. Mostly sunny today. There could be an isolated shower near Hallettsville, but here in San Antonio, we're going to stay dry around the metro area and hot. High temperature of 99 degrees today, very close to 100. We have yet to technically hit 100 degrees at the airport, but if we were going to hit 100 degrees, it would be today or tomorrow that we see that dreaded triple digit mark. But honestly, what's the difference between 99 and 100? You can't really tell the difference anyway. 101 for the high in Del Rio and 99 in Eagle Pass, 102 in Laredo. Now, one good thing about today's forecast is that in the afternoon, those dew points are going to take a dip and they'll be in the upper 50s, low 60s. While it's still going to be muggy, it's not going to be oppressively humid outside. So if you find some shade out there this afternoon, even when it's well into the 90s, it should feel okay out outside. Mostly sunny and 91 at noon, 99 for that afternoon high. South Southeast winds at 5 to 15. By the way, the sun will set at 752 and we'll dip back quickly into the 80s under clear skies. It's going to be a good night for any kind of uh, outdoor activities later tonight if you have late night plans this Saturday. Now on the radar and satellite, we do have some showers across Kansas and Missouri. And that's because of a cool front across those areas. Not unheard of to see a cool front in September in the central part of the United States. However, uh, we're not going to see cooler weather from this front. I hate to tease you there, but what we are going to see is a complex of storms in the afternoon developing from San Angelo to Waco, and these are going to try to push a few showers in the hill country north of Highway 90. We do have a 20% chance for an isolated shower tomorrow north of Highway 90, mainly in the hill country. Uh, and then as that front stalls, we have a chance on Monday during the peak heating hours of the day 
3 p.m. to 7 p.m. a better chance for rain, although the chance is still only about 30 percent on Monday in the afternoon. And if you have outdoor Labor Day plans, again, it's the afternoon hours that will be most affected. Otherwise, it's going to be a hot day as well for Labor Day. So just to summarize this weekend for you, this extended weekend, mostly sunny and hot 99 today, a small chance in the afternoon tomorrow, but 99 for the high temperature tomorrow. And then on Monday, a 30 percent chance for isolated afternoon showers and storms. Highs will be in the mid to upper 90s for the remainder of the next seven days. It's going to be hot. No surprise there, but you know, it is September. A fall officially starts on the 22nd. So mm. All right, before we head to break, quick reminder, we're not going to forget about our other Texas teams. Baylor at Texas State, 6 p.m. and then Prairie View at Texas Southern, 7 p.m. All right, go. it's 916 and 81 degrees. We'll be right back. Well, welcome back. The recent IPCC climate report says we can expect more severe weather in our future from severe drought to more intense sporadic rain events, even here in San Antonio. But our trees can actually help us in both of these events. So I spoke with experts who explain how trees combat hot temperatures and storm runoff. Trees do more than just provide shade. They clean our air and keep our city cool. They also help combat storm water. The important thing about trees and to some extent, any kind of vegetation is that it helps absorb water as opposed to letting the water run off of an impermeable surface like concrete or, or pavement. Sean Sublet, a meteorologist with the Climate Research Group Climate Central, explains that the deeper the root system, the better. So the more trees you have, typically you will have more absorbent soils nearby. And of course, you'll have the root structures themselves, which all will take in water. All right, so that's the big thing. Climate Central's research shows that by absorbing rainwater, reducing erosion, and creating more permeable soils, trees save nearly 400 billion gallons of stormwater runoff in the continental U.S. each year. Climate Central estimates that the number of trees in San Antonio remove 17.7 million tons of carbon dioxide equivalent, absorb 290 million pounds of air pollution, and fight off 2,751 gallons of storm runoff. Sublet said San Antonio isn't a good spot when it comes to the amount of trees helping us out. It could always be better, uh, but in a pretty good spot, especially compared to, to North Texas and West Texas. However, when it comes to severe flooding, especially in areas by our creek beds and rivers, he says no amount of trees can really prevent flooding from occurring. If you have very, very heavy rain, no amount of trees keep the flooding down, but it does decrease the risk of flooding, small stream flooding, and ultimately larger flooding as well. And so trees actually also keep us cool. They act as nature's air conditioners. Yep. And I know, Sarah, you've been talking about this UTSA study that won't be out for another year or so, but uh, they're doing a study on urban heat islands and what areas in San Antonio are actually affected by that. Mm -hmm. You know, areas that have more concrete or pavement, they radiate heat and tr more trees planted in those areas can help. But you have a really interesting graphic about tree equity. So what is tree equity? Yeah, so the database I'm going to show you here is all about tree equity. Now, tree equity is a measurement of amount of green space compared with population and demographics. Now, Sarah, we're going to be posting this database on your story on KSAT.com so that people can interact with it themselves. But as you see, you have New Braunfels here in San Antonio. Now, overall, San Antonio has a great tree equity score. This is out of 100, 93. I mean, you drive around, you see so many green spaces in our city. But as you zoom in, you can see that there are certain areas, these uh, tan areas here that have a little bit of less tree equity, uh, one of which could be the western section of Windcrest as a possibility or near Leon Valley. But a lot that I noticed just by looking at this uh, is that the south and near the downtown area, south and west side, uh, mm -hmm. looks like they could use a little bit extra green spaces in, in the area just to, to help promote equity as, as far as green spaces go, because everyone loves being able to go out to the park. Yes. And as you just mentioned, it also helps to keep things a little cooler and it helps with runoff. And of course, you know, whenever we get flooding, it's, it has to do with many different factors. How close are you to creeks? How Absolutely. close are you to rivers? But the trees and the root systems can help. Well, thank you for explaining that, Sarah. Yeah. Max? All right, thank you guys. That's all on KSAT.com? Yep. There you go. It's uh, 923, 81 degrees out. Don't worry, it's Saturday. Ooh, breakfast pizza?
love it. Texas Eats headed your way after the break. We're going to have a preview of what David Elder's cooking up. How long have you been cooking pizzas, right? Man, about all my life. That's why I'm a bit chubby. No, um, <laughs> so I, you know, I was born in the like late late eighties, so I'm a Ninja Turtle guy. Um, <laughs> started trying to make it when I was like 14, 15 in my mom's kitchen. But professionally, I've been doing it for nine years. I actually went to New York to study to learn how to do all of this. And you grew up in Del Rio, right? Yep. How long have you been in San Antonio? Nine years. Nine years. No, um, I went to school for about eight years. I don't know how they let me be in university that long. <laughs> <laughs> went back home, 27, got married, had two kids, and then seven years passed, and I'm over here now. Do you make all this from scratch? Everything. What's everything? Like, every like all our meats, some the cheeses we get in a block, we cut them, tomato sauces, we open them, we cut them up, we do garlic, everything. Discovered a hot take prevalent in the newsroom. Meatballs better than pepperoni. Love a good meatball pizza. All right, time now. 928, 81 degrees out. A lot to talk about, including the latest court battles with the heartbeat law. We're going to explain the latest as of this morning. Welcome back. We're going to start this half hour with a live look out at the roadways. Look at that. We have seen these roadways wow. pretty busy since the 6 a.m. hour. A lot of people out and about, a lot of people traveling for Labor Day weekend. So if you are out and about, make sure to be safe. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. What you can expect It is 9.30 this morning, Saturday, September 4th. Thank you so much for joining us. So if you didn't have to work this weekend, what would you do? Beach, pool? I would be driving down to Corpus Christi, my hometown, mm -hmm. because I just love the National Seashore. And Sarah Spivey, you have a beach forecast for us. I do. That was a perfect transition there, Sarah. But yeah, a lot of people on the roads to travel perhaps to Corpus Christi or Puerto Aransas, our local and closest beaches. Let's go ahead and take a look at the, what the forecast holds for today and tomorrow. Looks pretty good. Today will be near 90 degrees and Sunday near 90 as well. Not much of a chance for rain there today and tomorrow, uh, but there are going to be some uh, stronger winds today. Winds uh, southeast gusting up to 20 miles per hour, making the waters a little choppy at times likely. But all in all, a great forecast for uh, Port Aransas, Corpus Christi if you plan to head out there. Now, if you're going to stay here around San Antonio and try to get some time outdoors, maybe floating on the Guadalupe or Comal rivers, uh, we're going to be looking at a high temperature today of 99 degrees. It's going to be hot. It's going to be mostly sunny. We'll be in the 90s from noon to 5 p.m. essentially, all right? And it is going to be really sunny today too. Extreme UV index with a skin damage time of about 20 minutes. So remember that sunscreen and try to stay in the shade as much as possible today. And now out there with the satellite imagery, you can see that these morning clouds are already starting to clear. We've just are left with some puffy cumulus clouds. It's 83 in New Braunfels, 82 in Pleasanton, and 82 in Del Rio, 81 here in San Antonio, 79 in Kerrville, and 75 in Rock Springs. Now coming up in the forecast, we are going to talk about our chance for rain this Labor Day weekend. There is a small chance for rain and we'll take an updated look at the tropics. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, a man in jail accused of setting a woman on fire. Very complicated story. Here's what we know right now. An incident happened earlier this week in the 500 block of Maddox Drive. We now have the mugshot. This is 43 year old Roberto Coco Lamb. According to the arrest affidavit, he poured gasoline on the victim. That woman then used a lighter to start the fire. Now, the report also says she was taken to the hospital with burns covering her head, shoulders and chest. The suspect later arrested in Frio County. He is now facing an aggravated assault charge. Well, now to the battle over the new Texas abortion law. That's right. Over, right. Overnight, Planned Parenthood winning a court battle to protect its employees from lawsuits. ABC's Rachel Scott is, has a story from Houston. 
A Texas judge handing Planned Parenthood a very narrow victory. This targets that unique section of the Texas law that allows private citizens to sue anyone who helps a woman get an unlawful abortion. That Texas judge ruling that for now, one of the largest anti-abortion organizations in the state, Texas Right to Life, can no longer sue any of Planned Parenthood's doctors or health care workers. But that is a small drop in the bucket. There are 29 million people in this state. Other private citizens could still carry forward with those lawsuits. And the most restrictive abortion law in the nation still stands right here in Texas. I can tell you we have been on the ground now for days. The reality of that is still settling in. We were inside one clinic here in Houston just yesterday. One health care worker telling me that she has had to turn away 70 percent of the women who have called in. I feel like I've failed. I take it personally. I have failed in my role to help someone. They have relied on Planned Parenthood for years, and usually we would have some answers. We have no answers. We have no answers. And that was Rachel Scott reporting. Now, the pandemic leading to five more deaths here in Bear County. That now includes Bear County Deputy Ronald Butler. Uh, we know the 56 year old battling COVID since late July was in the hospital, pronounced dead yesterday afternoon. Uh, 1,218 COVID patients are hospitalized, a decrease in our seven day average, but we continue to see 1,100 COVID cases each day. Health officials reminding everyone to stay safe this holiday weekend. CDC officials saying if you are not vaccinated, please do not travel. And monoclonal antibody therapy, one of the handful of treatments with emergency use authorization from the FDA, now in the tool belt to fight COVID, currently only available to high risk patients with a doctor's referral. Basically, the antibodies are laboratory made proteins that mimic the immune system's ability to fight off harmful antigens like viruses. Now, the infusion is recommended for people with mild to moderate COVID symptoms to prevent them from going to the hospital. But once symptoms are severe and the patient has to go to the hospital with oxygen or mechanical ventilation, well, the antibodies won't work. Bear County opened the Regional Infusion Center at Freeman Coliseum. University health officials say on average they see 60 patients a day receiving infusions there. The Southwest Texas Regional Advisory Council says there's a number of conditions which would qualify a person to receive this antibody treatment. If you're 65 years or older, if you have a BMI of 35 or higher, if you're pregnant, if you have chronic kidney disease, or if you're diabetic. Now, if you're interested or have any questions about this antibody treatment, we have all those answers right now. Just head to KSAT.com. Well, now on KSAT.com, it's hard to believe it's been almost 20 years since the September 11th attacks. It was a day that shook the world. Thousands of lives lost and everyday life changed forever. For, me for many, the memory of that day has never faded. That's why we are asking KSAT 12 viewers to share their experiences and reflections of that day as part of our ongoing coverage. You can share on KSAT.com. Just look for this story. Well, this week's episode of KSAT Explains dives into homelessness in and around San Antonio and joining us live on Leading SA tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. City Councilman Manny Polias. He's going to be joining us to talk about the homelessness issue and what comes next. We're also set to talk about infrastructure, bike lanes, the expansion of the northwest side and of course the budget. So if you have any questions that you would like asked, you can submit them right now. Just head to the Leading SA section of KSAT.com. Then join us tomorrow at 8 a.m. to hear those answers. Time now, 938, 81 degrees out. Well, get ready to pay a little extra at the pump. After the break, we're talking about the rising gas prices. And before we head to break, a live look out at the Alamo City, jumping up to 81 degrees with a heat index. Already this morning, we're going to check in with Sarah Spivey for your full holiday weekend forecast. Well, busy roads and pricey gas. That's what you can expect if you're headed out for a long Labor Day weekend getaway. Prices here jumped nine cents in the past week, making this the priciest Labor Day weekend for Philip in seven years. Analysts tell us that's partly due to pre pandemic demand. The other factor is Hurricane Ida. Although the storm has not affected prices so far as much as first anticipated. While you may see some price fluctuations over the weekend, the bump at the pump hopefully is temporary. 
it's you know really Labor Day is the unofficial end of the summer driving season so typically gasoline demand falls and typically prices will fall along with that. Well, both AAA and Gas Buddy say barring any major events, we should see relief by the end of the month. All right, That's we know nice. <laughs> I was going to say we know a lot of people out and about for that holiday weekend. A lot of people headed to the beach. Yeah, a lot of people headed to the beach. We need a little relief, though, from the heat, guys. Mm -hmm. but not going to happen over the next a few days. Uh, the only way that you'll get a little relief from the heat is if you happen to get one of these isolated showers that's in the forecast tomorrow and Monday. But outside today, it's just going to be hot with no chance for rain. 81 degrees outside right now as we're seeing skies clear. 79 in Bernie Stage uh, at Bernie Stage Airfield, rather. 83 in New Braunfels. It's already 84 in Pleasanton. 82 at Stinson. 78 in Tarpley. 80 in Hondo. A wider view here. It's 83 in Cato. 82 in Del Rio and 75 in Rock Springs. That 81 feels more like 86 because of high humidity at the moment. We'll be at 91 at noon. Look, mostly sunny skies in the afternoon. 99 for the forecast high. Sunsets at 752 tonight and we'll be dropping down into the 80s. Southeast winds today at 5 to 15 miles per hour. You know, we might, as, might just hit 100 degrees for the first time this afternoon this year. So we'll see uh, exactly if we can get to that century mark this afternoon. I'm not hoping open for it, but it's possible. OK, another thing another thing to keep in mind is that it's humid out there right now. Dew points are in the 70s, but in the afternoon during the peak heating hours of the day, we're actually going to see dew points dip briefly into the upper 50s or near 60 degrees. Now, while that is not nice, it's definitely not as going to be as humid in the afternoon. So find some shade and you'll be just fine. Other than that, it's going to be a hot and quiet day for us here in San Antonio. But if you look to the north, you can see that there are a few things a brewing up in Kansas and in Missouri. There's a little bit of a complex of showers and a few thunderstorms as well. This is a long cool front, which is not unheard of for these areas this time of year, but we're not going to see cooler weather because of this front. Instead, what we're going to see is a chance for isolated rain tomorrow and on Monday. So let me take you through the future cast by tomorrow in the afternoon hours. There are going to be some thunder showers from San Angelo to Waco. These will likely develop some kind of outflow boundaries. And so north of Highway 90 and I-10, which is right there, north of Highway 90 and I-10, we will have a chance for an isolated shower or storm. All right, but mainly in the hill country and the chance for rain is only going to be 20% between the hours of 3 p.m. and 7 p.m. Then on Monday, that front will stall. And on Monday, I believe we have a slightly better chance of seeing rain than on tomorrow than tomorrow. In fact, in the afternoon tomorrow uh, on Monday, 30% chance for isolated showers and storms. So a little bit more coverage and that applies more for the metro area. Now, if you do get a shower either tomorrow or Monday, it'll likely result in periods of heavy rainfall as well as some lightning, but we're not anticipating any kind of severe weather. And again, most folks will unfortunately miss out on the rain over the next 48 hours or so. So 20% Sunday, 30% Monday and 20% on Tuesday. Tuesday. And as I promised, we'll take a look at the tropics here. There's a pretty strong hurricane out in the open Atlantic right now. This is Hurricane Larry, a Category 3 hurricane. It is expected to strengthen even more over the open Atlantic. Mostly a storm for the fish out there uh, in the Atlantic Ocean, but by Thursday it could impact Bermuda. And then for uh, the Gulf of Mexico, an area is being watched in on the Yucatan Peninsula for development in the Gulf in the next five days or so, about 30%. Now, odds are that if there is something that develops in the Gulf of Mexico, it will not impact our weather here in Texas. So it's going to be hot. Uh, this is a really long stretch of hot weather here. Our usually our hottest time of the year is uh, toward the middle of August, and we're kind of seeing the hottest part of the year for this year at least, the beginning of September. Fall officially starts on September 22nd, but I'm not counting down. Mm. Who's counting? I'm going to put good fall vibes out there. Okay. Mm. You know? Maybe that'll maybe the uh, atmosphere will listen to your vibes. I have a question. How do you do that? Uh, by drinking lots of PSLs. Oh. <laughs> Pumpkin can, spice. Yeah, can you latte. interpret that? Pumpkin spice latte. Ah, got it. Cold or hot? Um, both. Okay. Yeah. Uh, right now, definitely cold. It's too hot. <laughs> All right. Four, 946, almost 4 a.m. 946, 82 degrees now. Huh? All right, we got lots of football to talk about. Friday Night Lights, they are getting bigger and brighter every week. Look at that. Beautiful catch. We're going to have the highlights.
take a look at our lotto numbers. Pick three, eight, three, two, fireball three, daily four, one, eight, four, seven, fireball nine. Your cash five, four, five, six, 16, 31. Mega million, seven, 10, 12, 61, 65, big number three. Mega player two, we know someone won $1 million. Now up to 330 million. Ooh. Well, it is itty bitty time. Don't know if necessarily considered a puppy. Well, eight months old, still a puppy. Yeah, right, she's Michelle? still a little thing. Yeah, Michelle's here from the Animal Defense League, and oh my goodness, that is the smallest yes, dog in the world. Is. So this is Chicken Nugget, and she is a true <laughs> nugget. Believe it or not, she is eight months old. Um, so she was brought to us whenever she was just a little itty bitty thing, and she was sent over to foster so she could get to have an, an available age and weight to be spayed or neutered. Um, and she's a special girl, so she actually doesn't have functionality in her back legs, but she does not let that hold her back. She is just the happiest little camper and will bounce around. And yeah, she's ready to find her forever home now. Oh, she's just as cute <laughs> as can be. Well, you've got a big event coming up. I know it's we only do. September, but got to think ahead to October, your big, big fundraising it's event, It's going right? to be here before we know it. So we have our annual fundraising gala. It's our largest fundraiser of the year. It's our fur ball event. And this year it's going to be hosted at our main campus on Nacogdoches. And we're selling tickets to the public now. Um, we're, we have a main availability on October 13th. And um, like I said, this is how we get a lot of our funds to help babies like Miss Chicken Nugget. And this is a, a perfect opportunity. In other years, it's been at other venues, but yeah. now people get to actually see exactly. the campus out there and all the facilities that you have and what you may need. And yes. you get to uh, maybe do a little shopping for yes. little puppies and kittens, and it'll right? it'll be a great event. It's sit-down dinner. It's a three-course meal. Um, we'll have animals that will be around that you can socialize with. It's going to be a lot of fun. All right. And you can go to their website to find out more about that and for ticket information and for pricing or just head out to 11300 Nacogdoches or the Paul Jolly Center yeah. across from the zoo and uh, pick up a little chicken nugget out there. Little chicken nugget. Thank you, dear. Love chicken nugget. Also, love high school football. And it is time to talk football. Big game in our big game coverage last night. Third ranked Steel Knights hosting the fourth ranked Reagan Rattlers. Remember, big rematch. Last season, the Rattlers won 21-20. Take a look. Rat Reagan up 6-0 after a pair of field goals in the second quarter. Knights on the Rattlers. 15-yard line. Connor Vincent pass, but starts to feel the heat. Obviously, just scampered into the end zone. 7-6, but here, standing tall in the pocket. Number six, number four. Right in the middle of the end zone. He's basically untouched. Vincent, there you go. Tashawn Singleton. Slant. Beautiful. 14-6. Here's the final. Let's see. 14-6. Boom. I think it builds a little bit more of our confidence. Obviously, there's things we got to fix, but as long as we go in there playing as a team, I think everyone could be big. Uh, it was really important because we lost them last year, and we needed to come back with a bang, and we did that. All right, well, after knocking off DeSoto last week at home, the Judson Rockets decided to give themselves a big road test against a seventh-ranked team in the state. We're talking Lake Travis in Austin. Judson down 7-0 in the first. Then the Rockets boosters start to fire. Michael Burrows to Marvin Beasley out of the backfield. Look at that right up the sideline. Turns of the field. 64-yard swing pass. Ties it 7-all, but the Rockets would play from behind after that. Let's see. Well, the final, oof, Lake Travis 52, Judson 20. All right, time to head to Smithson Valley. Home opener delayed 45 minutes because of lightning, but when they did start, didn't take the Rangers long to score against Madison. Derek Mata dropping back, taking his time. Sit back, beautiful spiral, and there he is. Zach McDonald, great catch at the goal line, 34-yard touchdown. 7-0 Rangers, and the final from that one, Smithson Valley, home field, 28-0. Time to talk about the Roosevelt Rough Riders, Rough Riders on the road, East Central, and they came out firing against the Hornets. Let's take a look. Boom, standing tall. Oh, amazing contested catch. The Darius Coleman making a great grab over the defense, 24 yards. Roosevelt in the red zone. Miller feeling it. Oh, look at that. Beautiful corner catch. Fantastic catch. 18 yard touchdown. 7 0 Roosevelt. Let's take a look at the final and the scoreboard. Roosevelt losing East Central 32 to 20. Madison to Smithson Valley 28 0 shutout. And here we go. Steele 14, Reagan 6, Lake Travis ooh, 52, Judson 20. Now for Fan Cam, where for our fans, they help us cover some of the biggest games in our big game coverage. Here's our Andrew Seeley. <laughs> It is a full student section over at Antonian. Head coach Danny Padron and the Apaches hosting Pleasanton tonight. 
Home team on the move on the first drive of the game, but Caleb Castro's pass to the end zone is intercepted by J.J. Morales. It's a touchback, and the game is still scoreless. Second quarter now, Eagles up 3-0. Castro is picked off again and again. It's Morales. This sets up Pleasanton in plus territory, and they capitalize on the takeaway this time. Sean Ramos off the play action face, slings it to Diego Luna over the middle, stays on his feet, and dives in for the 27-yard touchdown with a little under two minutes left before halftime. Fans are on the field for halftime as fan cam departs. Pleasanton leads the home team 10 to nothing. From Antonian High School, Andrew Seely, KSAT 12 Sports. He stole your thunder. You were also at the game. I was there. All right. Got to represent. Yeah. Love it. 9.55, 82 degrees out. Well, tomorrow on GMSA, the young adults will tell you about a nonprofit hoping to help with a colorful new neighborhood. A look outside shows those morning clouds are getting out of here and it's going to be a mostly sunny day. It is already 81 degrees at the airport, 84 in Del Rio, 82 in Kerrville, 82 in New Braunfels. Now today's forecast calls for heat. No surprise there. We'll be at 99 degrees this afternoon, mostly sunny skies, south southeast winds 5 to 15 miles per hour. Now the sun is going to set at a 752 and then we'll be in the 80s. As for the rest of your Labor Day weekend, it's going to be hot tomorrow too. 99 for the high temperature tomorrow, but there is a small chance 20% for an afternoon pop up shower. A slightly better chance on Monday, but it'll stay isolated and will be focused on the afternoon for rain chances between about 3 to 7 p.m. on Monday on Labor Day itself. And then looking ahead, it's going to stay hot. We'll be in the 90s for the remainder of the week ahead. By the way, Max and Sarah, I have yet to get the pollen count in, mm. but as soon as I do, it'll go on KSAT.com. Thank you, Sarah. Yeah. You guys have any good plans? We have about 20 seconds left. Are you going to enjoy the 100-degree uh, weather? You know, my mom's actually coming in town on Monday, so oh, that'll be nice. nice. Say hi to Mama Spivey. I will. What about you? I'll be here with you, Max. Look at that. <laughs> We're be here all weekend long. We'll see you tomorrow at 6 a.m. But for now, Texas Eats starts right now. And I'll be here, too.